Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Church of Ventura, where we gather to keep love at our center in our ways of going forth into the world. Whenever you came, however you came, why ever you came, you are welcome here. We are com a community of many beliefs, identities, origins, sexualities, and genders, and all are welcome. I am Worship Associate Celia Ortenberg, and I am joined this morning by Worship Associates Jim Merrill and Xenia Young. Our minister, the Reverend Dana Warsnop, is out of the pulpit today, and we are thrilled to welcome back one of our favorite speakers, the Venerable Kusala Bhikshu. For many of us, Kusala needs no introduction, but for those who may not be acquainted with Kusala, he is an American-born Buddhist monk who lives and works at the International Buddhist Meditation Center in Koreatown, Los Angeles. Kusala's community service spans more than two decades. He speaks and he lectures broadly, and when at home, he feeds and cares for many previously lost and homeless cats who have now found a home with Kusala. We're so glad you're with us today. Before we begin our service, we have, I have a few announcements. Um, first of all, we thank all of those who are seated in this section by the windows for masking, which this is our masking um, area, and we really appreciate that you're there. The journey to belonging on Saturday, January 20th from 10 to 3. It's going to start. You can RSVP to a link in the UUCV this week or sign up in the connecting table after church. Martin Luther King Day will be celebrated in Oxnard tomorrow, January 15th from 9 to noon at the Oxnard Performing Arts Center. There will be a freedom march from Oxnard's Plaza Park to the Performing Arts Center, and it begins at 8 a.m. Wear your yellow shirt if you have one, and of course, a warm and cozy coat. After this service, you are encouraged to drop by the video screen that is in Berg Hall and talk to the folks that are Zooming into our service. And you Zoomers, stick around because you'll have folks coming to talk to you. And let me remind you to refer to the announcements in the weekly email message, UUCV, this week for current announcements and information. Now, I invite you all to bring with you what is yours, a burdened heart, a joyous song, a weary spirit, a seeking mind, Bring the gift of yourself to the altar. It is an honorable gift. Let us enter sacred space. I am Worship Associate Jim Merrill, and we invite those of you who are Zooming or streaming into this service to light a chalice or candle at home as Celia lights the chalice of our free faith here in the sanctuary. Our call to worship this morning comes from Sarah York. We receive fragments of holiness, glimpses of eternity, brief moments of insight, 
let us gather them up for the precious gifts that they are, and renewed by their grace, move boldly into the unknown. Come, let us worship together. Good morning, everyone. Hi, I'm Zach, filling in for Carolyn Birke uh, as she's off on her own uh, specific journey. I invite you all to uh, rise in body or in spirit. We'll be singing number 1008, When Our Heart is in a Holy Place. When our heart is in We are blessed with love and amazing grace when our heart is in a holy place. When we trust the wisdom in each of us, every color, every creed and kind, and we see our faces in each other's eyes. Then our heart is in a holy place. When our heart is in a holy place. When our heart is in a holy place. We are blessed with love and amazing grace. When our heart is in a holy place. When we trust the wisdom deep inside and we listen with a loving mind and we hear our voices in each other's words then our heart is in a holy place when our heart is in a holy place when our heart is in a holy place we are blessed Now I would like to invite all of the young folks or the young at heart to come forward and join me for a time for the child within us. Yay. How are you guys? Good. <laughs> we like having you here. Absolutely. Okay. Well, Today, I have a book that I think is a really cool book. It kind of reminds me of the book that you heard last year, last week, excuse me. It's called Here We Are. And you can see the book from up here, or you can look up at the screens. Um, this is a cool book. It's, called, it's written by Oliver Jeffries, and he does the artwork as well as writing the book, and I think that's really neat. Okay, here we are. Where is that? Here we are, right here. Well, hello, and welcome to this planet. We call it Earth. It's a big globe. It's floating in space, and that's where we live. We're so glad that you found us because space is really big. 
The planet is basically made of two parts. There is land and there is the sea. What do you think has the most? Do you think we have more land or more sea on this sea? You're right. More water on this planet. Firstly, let's talk about the land. It's what we're standing on right, and that, right now, and we know lots and lots about the land. Most times we're on the land. Say again? Most times we're on the land. Most times we're on the land, that's right. Sometimes we get to be in the sea or the water, and that's fun. But. Then there is the sea, which is filled with wonderful things. And we don't know as much about the sea as we do about the land. And then there's the sky. Wow. It is pretty complicated. So we're not going to talk about that right now. But you... <laughs> it's, a pretty sky. It's, a pretty sky. it's a pretty sky. It is, isn't it? Yeah. A very cool. Okay. On our planet, there are people. One people is a person, you are a person, and you have a body. And here you've got the inside and the outside of the bodies, but we only see the outsides. <laughs> this book says that the most important things for people to remember are to eat and to drink and to stay warm. Those are important things. But you know what? It's also important to feel loved, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's really important. People come in many sizes and shapes. Wow. We may all look different and act differently sometimes and sometimes sound different. But don't be fooled. We're all people. We all have more things the same than different. There are animals, too, and they come in different sizes and shapes. And they can't speak the way we can, but that's no reason not to be nice to them. He says, I can. He says, I can. That's right. <laughs> he says, I can speak. Probably a Yeah. Things can sometimes move slowly here on Earth. Like the clouds can move slowly. You're right, yeah. But more often, things move really quickly. And so use your time well, because it's going to be gone before you know it. Before you know it, you kids are going to be adults sitting out there. So enjoy it and use your time well. Though we've come a long way, we have not worked everything out yet, so there's plenty left for you guys to do. You'll figure out all sorts of things for yourselves, but just remember to leave notes so that everyone else knows what you did, too. It looks big, Earth, but there are lots of us here on Earth, and this is the most important part of this book. It says, be kind. That's right, be kind. There's enough for everyone. Well, that's planet Earth. Make sure you look after it, because that's all you got. And if you need to know anything else, you can just ask. I won't be far away. But when I'm not around, you can always ask someone else. You are never alone on Earth. Yeah? yeah. Okay. Do you guys remember what the most important thing of that book was that said? Be kind. To be kind, that's right, yay. All right, so why don't you rise and we will have a bridge of love for you guys to walk through. Thanks for coming today.
Each Sunday, this congregation gives away our collection to an organization in the larger community or to funds that help people in our own church. Those at home have two ways to give, through the link posted in the chat or by texting from your phone, 844-901-1779. Folks who are present in the sanctuary can text to give, or you can still write a check or even give cash then drop it in the basket at the back of the sanctuary after the service. Our offering today goes to Channel Islands Marine and Wildlife Institute for the rescue and rehabilitation of sick, injured, malnourished, orphaned, entangled, or oiled mammals. They rescue, rehabilitate, and return to the wild seals, sea lions, sea turtles, whales, dolphins found anywhere in the 155 miles of coastline in Santa Barbara and Ventura counties, which includes 106 beaches and four harbors. Trained and experienced volunteers respond to reports of marine mammals in distress, evaluate the animals, and communicate with Simwi's chief veterinarian to determine the best course of action for each situation. In some cases, that means immediate rescue and transportation to a, to a rehabilitation facility for treatment and expert medical care. Other times, volunteers create a safety perimeter around the animal and educate beachgoers about the need to keep an appropriate distance. Each year, they respond up to up to 1,800 marine mammals in distress, and since 1975, they have rescued more than 24,000 marine mammals along our coasts. Thank you for giving generously, as you always do. Keep moving on, keep moving on. Life is this way, yeah. Keep moving on. my day trying to recall the things I've done and debts I have to pay for there is one thing that I know that what you reap is what you sow keep moving on keep moving on life is this way so keep moving on Moving on every day. Brothers, sisters, mind out what we do and how we treat our fellow man. We all know and we all try and live the very best we can. For if you spread good all around, you'll be able to sleep when the sun goes down. On, keep moving on. Life is this way, so keep moving on, keep moving on every day. We are so grateful for the generosity of this congregation, which helps us weave a tapestry of love that we call community. Time in the service where we share the joys and sorrows that touch our lives. We place stones in the water for both the celebrations and sorrows in our hearts making ripples that are felt throughout our entire community. You can submit a joy or sorrow via a link on the website, uuventura.org, or a link in our Thursday email bulletin, UUCV This Week. 
Those received by 8 o'clock in the evening on Saturday will be shared that Sunday. I invite you now to speak into the gathered community or into the Zoom chat the names of those you wish to celebrate or memorialize or those in need of the loving embrace of this beloved community. Celia will now place one final stone in the water for all the joys and sorrows yet unspoken in the silent sanctuary of our hearts. May we be truly grateful for all that is our lives. And now I invite you all to um, join me in singing Return Again, number 1011. today is in two voices without hate may every creature abound in well-being and peace may every living thing weak or strong the long and the small the short and the medium size the mean and the great may every living being seen or unseen those dwelling far off those living nearby, those already born, those waiting to be born. May all attain inward peace. Let no one deceive another. Let no one despise another in any situation. Let no one from antipathy to hatred wish evil to anyone at all. Just as a mother with her own life protects her only child from hurt, so within yourself foster a limitless concern for every living creature. Display a heart of boundless love for all the world in all its height and depth and broad extent. Love, unrestrained, without hate or enmity. Then, as you stand or walk or sit or lie until overcome with drowsiness, devote your mind entirely to this. It is known as living the life divine. I invite you now into a time of meditation to close your eyes and get comfortable in your seats as we move into this time of silent reflection and contemplation. 
As we breathe a few nice deep breaths together, we quiet our minds, let go of the concerns of the day, the week behind us, and the week ahead of us, and we simply follow the empty breath. As you breathe, I invite you to feel the connection of the breath in this room. All is one. Breathe in the love that is offered by this community. A silent meditation. This is my last song If this is my final day If tomorrow I'll be gone What do I want to say If this is my last song If it's my time to go When my body's moved on I have to show no not fortune or fame they scatter to the wind the things that make a name just don't matter in the end but is the world a little more peaceful oceans and skies a little more blue humankind a little bit wiser about the good that we can do does the sun shine a little bit brighter where before there was only rain if so then i'm glad i came if these are my last words of the earth to hear if all that I have ever been is about to disappear if these are my last words there's nothing that I need to say I have only tried to serve it's never been about talking anyway so much hurt it's hard to understand all I can hope to feel is that I am doing what I can so is the world a little more peaceful oceans and skies a little more blue is humankind a little bit wiser about the good that we can This is my last song.
song What do I leave behind What do I pass on If I am out of time Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. You know, we all made it. It's, but then you have to ask yourself, what the hell is going on? You look at the world, you look at your city, you look at your neighborhood. I don't remember it being this way. But I can't remember what way it used to be. And I found in Buddhism a wonderful model that will give us some direction in understanding why things are the way they are. It's called the five niyamas, the five reasons stuff happens. Now, the first niyama probably makes sense. It deals mostly with geology, this planet Earth that we live on that's circling the sun. And a lot of stuff happens on Earth because it's Earth. So if you go to Iceland, you might find some volcanoes and some earthquakes. And if you go to Iowa, you might find 40 below. And if you stay in LA, it's not bad. The Earth is treating us pretty well. But we have to look at the Earth and say, OK, I got to factor that in. Why is my life this way? Why is this going on? What can I blame on the Earth? How can I come to a place of acceptance? Now, the second niyama is biology. We are sort of stuck in our biology. Now, the reason I have a little hat on today is because it's cold. And my hair fell out <laughs> because I'm old now. And it gets cold without a little hat on. So I'm going, OK, I have to blame my father and grandfather for that because we all had the same hairline, or at least we did, and now I do. And you're going, OK. And then we've got tall and small. We have brown eyes and blue eyes. We have all sorts of reasons we look the way we do and act the way we do. And a lot of it has to do with our biology. So number two would be biology. Number one would be geology. And now number three, which is going to sound very Buddhist to you, karma. Karma is the reason a lot of stuff happens to us. Now, let me explain what karma is, because one of my favorite bumper stickers in the 1970s was what goes around comes around. And I thought, wow, how profound is that? I didn't know what it meant, but it sounded really good. <laughs> so karma is everything we think, everything we say, and everything we do. We are creating this energy. We are like big human transformers. And we're taking this sort of energy that doesn't really have much value, either good or bad, and we're giving it value. OK, now the consequence of this energy production in early Buddhism is called vipaka. So we have karma, vipaka, cause, and consequence. 
Now you look around and you say to yourself, well, you know, I've been a pretty good person, but stuff keeps happening that's negative in my life. And I'm trying to figure out why, because I keep kindness right at the top of my mind and I, I'm gentle and I feed cats and all this kind of stuff I do so I can have really good consequence and it doesn't seem to be working. Well, the problem is this is not our first lifetime. I know that's a radical concept and may be hard to understand and even harder to believe. But in Buddhism, we feel we've done this before, time and time again. And it never gets any better. <laughs> Until one day we become enlightened and achieve nirvana. And then we'll never have to do it again. How cool would that be? And you might say, well, if you're not doing it again, what are you doing? Where are you? Where do you go? Well, according to Buddhism, you go to nirvana. I don't know what that is. I don't know where it's located. I don't know how many people are going to be there before I get there. And the only thing I know is it is unborn and undying. So it's sort of like forever, whatever forever means to you, but there's no suffering. Sounds pretty good. So four lifetimes ago, I had a terrible accident, and I had a car that got crumpled, and somebody got hurt, and I got blamed for it, and my insurance went up. And now, in 2024, four lifetimes later, I'm paying the dues. I feel the consequences. But I can't think back to it. I can't remember it. I can't recall it. It doesn't quite seem fair, does it? But the idea in karma is it takes the place of a divine lawgiver. Okay, so we don't have to depend on the law to know whether we're skillful or unskillful. What a Buddhist depends on is suffering. Am I suffering more? I must be unskillful in some way. Either my thought, my speech, or my action. Am I suffering less today? I must be more skillful. I must have good thoughts and good speech. Maybe no speech at all. Maybe that's the best speech. And my actions always seem to, to end in kindness. Yeah, maybe that's why I'm having a good day today. So we can use that as a reference point every day. How am I doing? How skillful am I today? How much hatred and anger do I have today? How much love and kindness do I have today? So karma is a big influence, but it's not the only influence. I don't know if you remember, but a couple years ago, there was a giant tsunami in Thailand. And a lot of people got hurt by that. And I remember listening to the radio and heard a Catholic priest said, well, they, it's God's will. And I went, whoa, man, that's heavy. And then I heard the Buddhist monk say, it's their karma. And I'm going, man, that's heavy. And as it turns out, it's never just one thing. It's a bunch of things all happening together that create what's ever being created. So you can't ever blame that one thing, though it would be so easy and so nice to be able to do that. But it's far too complicated for that. So when I looked at the tsunami, I thought, well, you've got the earth. Hey, there's an earthquake right there. And you got people that actually lived there, were born there, their parents were born there, so it must have something to do with their biology too. And the karma could have happened when they tried to save all the people. 
So they were creating good karma by saving people from drowning. And going, yeah, okay, much more skillful way of looking at that tsunami back in Thailand. Okay, the fourth, the fourth niyama, the fourth reason stuff happens is the dharma. Now, if you're not like a Hindu or a Buddhist, the dharma is going to mean nothing to you. But the dharma is sort of like the truth, according to Buddhism. It's what Siddhartha Gautama realized and became the Buddha. It's an empirical perspective. It's not scientific. He saw this stuff, and he put it all together, and he said, yeah, that's the reason. So Dharma, let's talk about Dharma. How about the Four Noble Truths? That's Dharma. How about the Eightfold Path? Oh, that's Dharma. How about meditation and the 44 different kinds of meditation you find in Buddhism? That's Dharma. How about the seven factors of enlightenment? That's Dharma. It goes on and on and on. There are books and books and books of Dharma. And all these really intellectual types are sitting down reading all this stuff, trying to understand it, trying to give it meaning. And yet, it really doesn't matter at all until you use the Dharma. Just knowing the Dharma is just a bunch of knowledge. Won't even get you a cup of coffee at Starbucks. But when you do what you've read, what you've learned, and put it into practice, you have the opportunity to change the world. And that's what this song was about. Daniel Neymard, the last song. Listen carefully to the lyrics next time you hear it. It's wonderful. And it's, what have I done in this lifetime to make a difference, to change the course, to make people suffer just a little less? What have I done? And the Dharma is the way a Buddhist helps change the world in a positive, wholesome way to give less suffering and more joy and happiness to those around you. Now, people say to me, you know, why do you feed cats, Kusla? You know, of all the things you could be doing in the world, you feed a bunch of homeless cats. Well, let me tell you, I have learned so much in feeding those homeless cats. Because number one, they never say thank you. <laughs> you can give them the best food or the worst food, and they're just happy to eat. You know? So there's sort of its selflessness when it comes to feeding cats. And then after they're through consuming their food, what do they do? They just walk away. You might see them again in a few hours because they know it's time for dinner. But until then, they were just doing what they do. They're being cats. So not to get attached to the good stuff. Not to get attached to all the things you've done to help people or help yourself. But simply just do it and let it go. Don't make a big deal about it. Because you know what? Nobody cares. Unless you're helping them. And then they only care while you're helping them. So just help them and just walk away. Be like the cat. Because there's another day, another situation, another person to help. So now we've got four reasons why stuff happens. We have the geology, we have the biology, we have karma, which is the moral aspect, and then we have the dharma. And finally, the last reason, according to Buddhism, Buddhism stuff happens, is the mind, the mind, holy moly. Talk about just the possibilities of the best and the worst. The mind, and it never stops. I don't know if this affects you the way it affects me, but 
I'm up every morning at 3 o'clock. I don't know why, but apparently my mind has something it wants to share with me. <laughs> so I sit there and I listen and I'm going, wow, isn't that interesting? 23 years ago, look what I did. <laughs> and I still can't forgive myself for it. Wow, man. And finally, 3.30 rolls around and sleep comes back. And you wake up not remembering anything, but you know the next day, 3 o'clock is going to happen again. And it will be calling you, do we have to be our thoughts? Can we simply observe them? Can we simply appreciate the complicated mind that we all have, how well-educated we are? how we can think about space and inner space and below the ocean and on top of the ocean. And we think about all these things all the time and we give them value. This is an important thought. I don't want to lose this thought. Man, I've waited my whole life for this thought. Oh, no, where did it go? Where did it go? I was hoping it would last longer. So I could use it to make my life simply perfect. And the mind always wants perfection because that's its job. It wants you to live in a perfect way. It wants you to speak in a perfect way. It wants you to think in a perfect way. I have come to understand that making better does not make perfect. I have come to understand that Maybe good enough is my perfect. And I can rest easy knowing I gave some effort, maybe a lot of effort, and this is what happened, and that's fine. But the mind, it keeps edging me on. Kusla, you could do better than that. Come on. What's wrong with you? Didn't you take your vitamins today? What's wrong with you? And I listen to my mind, and I just listen to my mind. And I listen to my mind. And one day it might stop, but I doubt it. One day I might not know the answer to something, and I won't care. That'll be a good day. I can always go to Google. Google can tell me. But maybe... Maybe, after all these years on Earth, maybe the best part about life is the mystery, not the knowing. And now with AI, we're going to know even more. <laughs> How lucky are we? But maybe it's okay at some point in your life just to say, I don't know. I don't know. And... I don't care. Oh, becoming sort of a rebel, eh, Kusla? You don't care? Nah, it's okay. It'll be fine without me. So what does it all mean? That's the thing. What does it all mean? How can we put these five niyamas, these five causes into a context that gives us the ultimate meaning Man, well, we have, we have the ultimate meaning. Leonardo da Vinci said, pay attention. Pay attention. It's all connected. It's all connected. That's the meaning. Everything happens because everything is connected to everything else. That's what you spent 20 minutes talking about today. It's all connected. And in Buddhism, we feel the same way about it. We call it shunyata, emptiness. Empty of independent existence. Nothing exists independently. Everything is here because of something else. Wow. When I first heard those words, they didn't mean anything to me. I'm thinking, what the heck are you talking about? Everything is interconnected and interdependent. 
everything is supported by everything else. Nothing can stand apart. Nothing can exist on its own. That's right. That's the ultimate meaning. That's the ultimate meaning of my life, is that everything is connected. And then, then you start thinking about it. Because the mind likes to think, wants to make sense, it wants to take credit. And you go, well, okay, maybe. Now, there is this scientist, I wish I could remember his name, but I can't. There was a three-part series on PBS. You may have seen it. He's a scientist, and he's also spiritual. So I was intrigued. Are you kidding me, a spiritual scientist? What kind of spirit does he have? What kind of Buddhist is he? Well, he's not a Buddhist. He's spiritual. And he talks about going to his family house on a lake island. And it was at night. And he's in a boat. And he lays down in the boat and looks at the sky. And in that moment, everything merged. It all came together. He was able to see how all things are interconnected and interdependent. And it transformed him. And he hasn't been the same since. He keeps talking about it. In spite of all the other scientists in the world, he keeps talking about his spiritual insight. So you don't need to be a meditator. You don't need to be a Buddhist. You don't need to be a Hindu. You don't even need to have a boat on the lake. It can happen at any time where you can go in to this, I'm going to call it, enlightenment and realize how all things are interconnected and interdependent and from that day forth you have changed and you will never be able to look at the world in the same way again because if there is one person or dog or cat or aquatic mammal who is suffering there is a part of you that's suffering. You can't turn your head away anymore. You can't put it in the sand. You are interconnected and interdependent with all those suffering beings on this planet and maybe even beyond the planet. And now you have no rest. Now you're up at 3 in the morning, not because your mind wants to talk to you, but how can I make the place better? How can I change the world like that song talked about? When it's time for me to leave, I feel comfortable that I did the best I could and that was good enough. And if some people are suffering less because of me being here, fine. It really didn't have much to do with me, though, because we're all connected and we're all in this together. And even though it doesn't feel like we're working towards this, we are. So that's what I came to understand with this great meaning of we're connected. There, we can't look at any place on this earth and say, that's not me. That is me. In all its many manifestations, that's me. So what am I going to do? Well, what I'm going to do right now is play a little song in my harmonica. <laughs> because if I play it well enough, I'll be reducing your suffering. <laughs> and I'll feel good about that. So here we go, blues in the key of G.
Thank you. And okay, I'll stand over there. <laughs> Cheer up, Jim. I invite you to stand in body or in spirit. Please join me in reading the words on the screen as we prepare to extinguish our chalice. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of unity, or desire of commitment, for those who share the intent of our lives, and for those who again. Before we part and before we hear the uh, benediction from the Venerable Kusala, I remind you that you can leave cash or checks for this week's offering in the basket at the back of the sanctuary. All of you here in the sanctuary today are invited after the service for coffee, tea, bagels, and conversation in our community room, Berg Hall. Also, visitors and guests are enthusiastically invited to stop by our popular connecting table right through the double doors and for a chat. Nearby is a welcome table where a welcome team member will answer questions about our church and Unitarian Universalism. And remember to stop by the screen in Berg Hall and talk to those joining us via Zoom. Our last thought. May the suffering ones be suffering free the fear-struck fearless be. May the grieving shed all grief. May the sick find health relief. Thank you. 